Welcome everyone to this video tutorial about lump sums and unit costs in terms. Today I will present you what types of program specific lump sums and unit costs you can create in GEMS version 4. I will show you where you can find the section to add them and what you have to consider when designing your lump sums and unit costs for GEMS. This tutorial covers all program lump sums and unit costs available in GEMS version 4, namely lump sums covering multiple cost categories, unit costs covering multiple cost categories, and unit costs covering one cost category. All these follow the logic of the harmonized implementation tools. Let's get started. We first have to log in into our GEMS system and we are using a program user who has access to the simplified cost options in GEMS. Logging in, we see that in this GEMS installation, the first call is already published and we can see under program, the program setup that was already created. In the program setup, in the left side menu, we have the menu point simplified cost options. Here we can find all the program lump sums and unit costs. We see in the first table all the lump sums that were created for this program and in the second table all the unit costs that were created. This section allows us to add new lump sums and unit costs. Let's get started with adding a lump sum. I click on add lump sum and I get to the form for adding program lump sums. I have to define the lump sums in all the application form input languages as they will be used in the project budget of the application form. So in this case, I have English and German and I start with defining the name of the lump sum. Let's say the name of the lump sum in English is preparation of small projects. So this is a lump sum for preparation of small projects. For simplification, I use the same name as a German translation. However, you should provide a proper translation in all your application form input languages. The next field is a description of the lump sum where you can describe what is included in the lump sum or for whom it is to be used. However, this is an optional field that you can or cannot use for your lump sum. All the mandatory fields are marked with an asterisk and you have to fill them, in, fill them in to be able to create the lump sum. So we have to define the lump sum cost. Let's say in this case, the, for the preparation of small project, there is a lump sum of 20,000 euros foreseen in your program. As a next step, you have to define if you allow to split this lump sum between partners or if this is not allowed. Let's say we allow to share the lump sum between partners. As a next step, you should define to which phase of the project your lump sum is related. As we are creating a lump sum for preparation of small project, this is for the phase of preparation. And finally, you have to define which cost categories are covered by the lump sum. We are following here the logic of the harmonized implementation tools so that all the lump sums that the partners can use in the application form shall cover all the cost categories which are um, allocated to this output. So there shall be at least two cost categories for each lump sum. It shall also include any flat rates as the lump sums will not trigger additional flat rates in the partner budgets. Let's say in this case, we have a lump sum for preparation of small project covering 
staff costs, office and administration, travel and accommodation, as well as external expertise and services. When we filled in the whole lump sum form, we can save the lump sum. And once we confirm the saving, this lump sum is added to our list of program lump sums. Clicking on this item brings us back to the form. We can check it again. However, certain data, namely the lump sum cost, the splitting, the phase and the cost categories cannot be edited if a first call has already been published in our system and potentially this lump sum was already used. If you realize that uh, your lump sum is not up to date or that you made some mistake when filling it in, you better not use this lump sum, but rather you create a new lump sum in the list that you will use for your calls. Coming back to the simplified cost options available, we see that there are also the unit costs, which can be added to the list of unit costs in a similar way. You click add unit cost, which brings you to a form where you can define your unit cost. Again, you have to use all the application form input languages. So let's get started with English and we say we define a unit cost for a training course on energy saving. For simplification, again, we use the same name in our German translation. We can define a description of the unit cost or in case the unit cost is for staff, we can define for which staff function this unit cost can be used. And we can define the unit type, which shall trigger the unit cost. Let's say in our case, this is um, the participant to this training course. So again, we define this in all the input languages of the application form. And once we define the unit type, we have to define the cost per unit. Let's say in this case, it's 200 euros per participant in a training course on energy saving. Finally, we have to define if this is a unit cost covering one cost category or multiple cost categories. If only one cost category is covered, we tick only this one cost category. Let's say it's only external and expertise and services costs that are covered by this unit cost. In this case, this unit cost will potentially also trigger other flat rates when chosen in a partner budget. However, if we create a unit cost for multiple cost categories, let's say in our case, this unit cost for the training course and energy saving covers several cost categories, namely staff, travel, and also external expertise. In that case, there will be no further flat rates triggered when a partner selects this unit cost in his partner budget. So the flat rates that your program uses, potentially office and administration, shall already be calculated into the amount of the unit cost. When the form is fully filled in, again, we can save. And upon confirming the saving, this unit cost will be added here to our list of unit costs. This is how you create lump sums and unit costs.